Next step on this car is push rod base suspension, which means that instead of a strut going up and down vertically, we've decided to basically try and make something that goes horizontal. Where the strut's normally going to be, there's going to be a push rod machined out of chrome molly steel and some sort of fulcrum link in between. I'm still working out exactly how to do it, but it uh, shouldn't be too hard. A few reasons why the strut towers and the K are fucked, they're rotted out. I tried S13 ones, I didn't quite like the way they fitted in the rear. Motorbike shocks are really cheap, they're already adjustable. Also, we have no idea what the spring rates are going to do on this thing. So, we'll be able to put different mounting holes in the fulcrum link and uh, be able to adjust the spring rate pretty easily. I'm going to mount it all on this piece of RHS, which I can easily mate into the KE, and uh, if we bin it, we should be able to reshell it pretty easily. Just graft this whole thing into another car. From my pretty rough calculations, motorbike shocks would be good for the job. Uh, they actually have a pretty high spring rate. I guess considering how far away the wheel is on the swing arm, they have to be able to put up with quite a bit of leverage. So that makes sense as to why the spring rates are actually a bit higher than something off a car. Uh, that's an example of the fulcrum link. I've sort of sketched out that I'm about to machine up. So the push rod on the car wheel side should be able to be moved in and out. If you move it out the wheel gains more leverage over the shock. If you move it in uh, the shock gains more leverage over the wheel. Man, you know in turn you get a higher spring rate but you will lose travel. Whereas a softer setting you will gain travel. That's how it should work anyway. So this is a job for the big bad milling machine. She's just looking for an excuse to be used. Need a bunch of different collets, different size end mills to shape it out. Boring head out of the engineering cabinet. And my favorite surface cutter. Just a quick note on the aluminium I'm using, the billet block. It is a 6061T6, which is an aircraft grade of aluminium. I buy it from an aircraft supplier, it's actually pretty cheap. Uh, it's not the highest grade, the 7 series grades are the really expensive aircraft grade stuff. Don't be fooled by the term billet. Billet just refers to the block it's machined out of. You could machine it out of cheese and still call it a billet part. Yeah, I think that was a bit much for the old girl. You can actually cut this shit with a circular saw, but it will make a fucking mess of my shit.
Getting it squared up to size takes the most time. Once we're there, it uh, shouldn't take too long. Those fucking scary horror movies, like Creepshow, fun horror movies. Sounded like a good idea in my head to mill these out this way. Actually, a huge pain in the ass to mill those slots so deep. I should have just made it out of two pieces of plate with the bolts drilled in it. But oh well. So that's the bolt pattern mapped out. 
You can actually see an amateur fuck up I made there. I forgot to re-straighten my vise from a previous job. So while I was drilling out the bolt pattern, it was just going crooked. But uh, fixed it with a bigger spotting drill, no dramas. So you can sort of see how the leverage is going to work. That's the pivot where it's bolted to the chassis. That's the shock mount. And then that's the link to the suspension on the car. So at that link, at that setting, it's basically got a one to one ratio. And then as you move it further out, the car gains more leverage over the shock more travel and a softer shock. couldn't find the right size drill bit for the pivot bushes I want to use so I had to swap the head out for a boring head which um, basically you put a bar in you can drill out any hole you want just takes a little bit of messing around to set it up that's all probably about four or five hours in on these things now making a mess of everything done. I'm not going to claim they're perfect. Had a couple of issues on that one with the cutter. I had to rework it. But uh, 
come up pretty sick for a rusty Corolla. You can see it's sort of taking shape now. Just got to weld the tabs on, moving the pivot. Test fit it in the car and measure up the last bit. Hopefully this works out like I guessed or I'm going to look like a dickhead. <laughs> 